So let's discuss radical stability. In other words, why is it that when we go from methyl to primary to secondary to tertiary radicals, our stability of these radicals increases? So the answer to this question lies in two different effects. The first effect is known as hyperconjugation. In other words, when we go from methyl to primary, secondary to tertiary, we have more hyperconjugation taking place and that's exactly why these guys become more stable as we go from methyl to tertiary. Now we already spoke about hyperconjugation when we spoke about carbocation stability. Now we said that when we go from methyl carbocations to tertiary carbocations, our compounds, our, our carbocations increases in stability because of this same effect known as hyperconjugation. So let's recall what hyperconjugation is by comparing the methyl structure and the primary structure. So let's examine the primary first. So here we have our central carbon with the 2p orbital that has one electron in the non-bonding 2p orbital. We have the two H atoms and the methyl group shown here. Notice this methyl group has three H atoms and each carbon H bond is sp3 hybridized. And that means that we have two electrons, so this sp3 hybridized bond is completely filled, and this 2p uh, orbital is only halfway filled. That means because it's only halfway filled, there's room for some interaction. And this interaction between the half-filled 2p orbital shown here and the fully filled sp3 hybridized orbital shown here is relatively stabilizing. This is known as hyperconjugation. So if we look at our energy diagram, the 2p orbital is slightly higher in energy than the sp3 hybridized orbital. And that's simply because the more s character we have, the closer our electrons are to our nucleus, to the protons of the nucleus, and therefore more stable our atom is. So that's exactly why this atomic orbital is slightly lower in energy because it's more stable. So, quantum theory tells us that whatever number of atomic orbitals we're combining, we have to form that same number of molecular orbitals. Since we're combining two atomic orbitals, we must form two molecular orbitals. That's exactly what happens. The first molecular orbital is called the bonding molecular orbital. The second molecular orbital, the one that's higher in energy, is the anti-bonding molecular orbital. Recall that only two electrons, a maximum of two electrons, can go into any given orbital. And because we have one, two, three electrons going into our bond that's formed here, our hyperconjugated bond, we have to start filling at the bottom, so one, two, and then the last one, the third electron, goes into our anti-bonding molecular orbital. And overall, this is in fact a relatively stabilizing effect, and that's exactly why, as we go from methyl to primary, we have a more stable molecule. Stability increases because if we look at methyl, there are no carbon atoms here to interact in this stabilizing hyperconjugation effect. And as we go from primary to secondary, from secondary to tertiary, we have more hyperconjugation taking place because we have more methyl groups attached to our central carbon. So, once again, as we go from methyl to tertiary radicals, stability increases because there is more potential for hyperconjugation to take place. Now that's only the first part of the story. The second part we have to look over here. Now notice here we have a secondary carbon radical carbon and we have a primary radical carbon. So here we have the carbon that has the single electron attached to only one other carbon and here we have the central carbon attached to two different carbons. 
So clearly, because this is a secondary and this is a primary, because of hyperconjugation, this one should be more stable, and in fact it is. But let's take a different approach. Let's instead examine the types of bonds, the carbon-carbon bonds, found in these two molecules and let's compare and contrast them and see which ones are more stable. So let's begin with the secondary. So we're counting sp3, sp2 hybridized bonds. So this carbon and this carbon are each attached to four different atoms and that means that they're both sp3 hybridized while this central one is approximately sp2 hybridized and that means we have two one two sp3 sp2 hybridized bonds we're, we're not counting this bond because it's a carbon h bond remember in our analysis we're only taking into consideration the carbon carbon bonds so we have two of these bonds and zero of sp3 sp3 hybridized bonds now let's examine this picture. Let's examine the primary. Now the primary has only one sp3, sp2 hybridized bond because we have one shown here and the second carbon-carbon bond is between sp3 and sp3 hybridized atoms. So that means that we have one and one. Recall that the more S character we have in a bond, the more stable it is. And that's exactly why sp3, sp2 hybridized bonds are more stable than sp3, sp3, because sp2 contains more S character than sp3. sp3 contains 25%, sp2 contains 33.3% approximately. So that means not only is this more stable because of the hyperconjugation effect, but it's also more stable simply because the carbon-carbon bonds are more stable. So we have two effects taking place here that's causing the tertiary to be more stable than secondary and secondary to be more stable than primary and so on and so forth. So once again, to conclude, the more substituted radical has stronger, more stable bonds, and there's more potential for hyperconjugation to take place.